Welcome to the Book of Job. And uh, today, as I mentioned in class, we will be covering chapter 14. But uh, before I go to chapter 14, uh, it is important for you to take at least, uh, at least a brief look to chapters 12 and 13, because the reply of Job starts in chapter 12, as you see here. I have here on the screen the beginning of chapter 12, by Yan, Yov, by Yomar. We're familiar with this expression. And then this is this famous verse that I mentioned last time, and it's probably it's a good one to memorize. It says this: "Amnam ki atem am v'imachem tamut chokma." So basically saying, "Truly, you are the people atem am, and with you will die wisdom." So here, uh, of course, uh, what I emphasized last time and I want to repeat is that you have to see that this is also a little bit of a contest to wisdom. Right, he's sarcastically, Job is sarcastically telling his friends, you know, guys, if you die, wisdom will die with you. But now notice what he continues to say in verse 3. Gamli leivach, kemochem, gamli, also to me, better, also I have leivav. And of course, you might be familiar with this noun, leivav, leiv. I also have heart. And in the Bible, the Old Testament, the heart is the mind. I also have mind. I also have sense. It's also some translated, you know, get heart. Doesn't mean get courageous. It means get some sense. Perhaps we can say, hey, you know what? I also have a brain, just like you. And this expression is interesting uh, because most people translate non lo nofel anochi mikem. Lo nofel anochi anochi mikem. Most translate like this, I am not inferior to you. But please notice here the, the, the verb nafal, to fall. I'm not inferior to you. And who doesn't know all these things that you guys know? Later in chapter 13, it repeats the same expression. But please notice how it says, Ki datachem yadati gamani. See also gam. Gamli, here gamani. Just as you know, I also know. I know also. So he says, you know, I know what you guys know. And again, notice this expression is repeated. Lo no fel anochimikem. Lo no fel anochimikem. I'm not inferior to you. I'm not more stupid than you, basically, Job is saying. I also have a brain. And wisdom is not going to die with you. So again, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit funny, I guess you could say, but it's clear from these expressions that there is also a, a battle of wits taking place in uh, in this book. Of course, it's about pain, it's about suffering, it's about theodicy, but it's also a battle of wits. And I know, notice also another verse that I wanted to pay attention. Uh, perhaps you should pay attention in Hebrew because it's very key here. In Job 13:15, this is considered by some a key verse in the whole Bible. In the whole book of Job, it says basically this: "Hain ikteleni lo ayachel ach derachai el panav o kiach." So, hain here is not behold, but it's actually if conditional. If you kill me, katal, we're familiar, hopefully, with katal. If you will kill me, I will not hope, literally, I shall not hope. But you will notice that most translations, most versions understand it differently. They understand this law as being like this, being actually this law. Being the law of, um, and I'm going to draw it for you here. Okay trying to draw, I don't know if it works, I don't know why it's not letting me draw right now, it usually it does, so let's draw like this, so you notice here, low, yeah, it's letting me draw now, most understand it low, even if you kill me, even if he kills me, I'm sorry, even if he kills me, notice this is third masculine singular, even if he kills me, Even if he kills me, I will hope, Yachal, I will hope in him, or I will wait for him. It's not, I will not hope, 
where I will not wait, but most understand it, I will hope in him. And if that is the translation, and notice again, it's questionable, but most translations do go like this, then this is a major expression of hope from Job. Even though he kills me, I will still hope in the Lord. So please pay attention to this verse. It's key verse 13, 15. You might want to look at it before you go to 14. And then another another verse that is kind of important, and it's also in chapter 13. It says, Lama fanecha tastir. Literally means, why are you hiding your face? Why are you hiding your face? And uh, I don't want to spend too much time here because uh, we want to look at, uh, of course, we want to look at chapter 14. But perhaps you recognize the verb satar, to hide. Why do you hide your face from me? And you consider me, chashav. You think of me, you consider me le oyev. Oyev as an enemy. Why do you consider me as an enemy? And if you look at this, this verbal, all these consonants, Aleph, Vav, Yod, Vav, it looks very much like the name of Job, Yov. Why are you consider me an enemy? So it's very interesting, this play could be a play on the name of Job. Why are you hiding your face from me and you're considering me as your enemy? And then chapter 13 and like this, man wastes away like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth eaten. So this is how chapter 13 ends, and now we're ready to start chapter 14, and this is where we're going to be our focus. But again, it's important that you read chapters 12, 13, because they're still part of Job's reply, and again gives us a good idea about this battle of wits and also about Job's thinking. So now notice how chapter 14 starts, it says this, Adam Yelud Isha. Literally, man is born of a woman. Katsar Yamim Usva Rogeh. Katsar Yamim. Short of days, literally. Short of days and full of trouble. Rogeh. Or is brief of days with full of trouble. This is fairly clear, just uh, the thing that you must pay attention to is this form of Yalad. Yalud, it's usually considered to be a cal passive, which is very, very rare. We would be familiar probably with Pual, which would be Yulad, but this is considered by many, many a cal passive. So man is born of a woman, short of days, he has few days basically, and all of those days are full of rogas. And of course, Rogis is what we saw in verse in chapter 3, verse 17, where Job was complaining and lamenting. No, notice here, Rogaz, in the passive sense, C317, and this is comments from, um, from uh, uh, Gray. He says, this is probably a conscious parody of the description of a happy life. A happy life is achieved as sabayamim, full of days. You know, it's full of days. Somebody who's happy, who had a full life, he said he's, he was full of days when he dies, usually. But here, instead of being full of days, it's full of trouble. Maybe it's a parody on that. So notice again, rogaz usually means agitation. Full of agitation and full of trouble is the translation. But then the text continues. Katsitz yata vaimal. Va ivrach. Katzil velo yamot. Katzit, katzit. Like a flower, he comes out and withers. So, this, of course, we have here a, a simple perfect. This is a perfect. And then a va consecutive. Now, here it's something that you're not familiar with. It's the root malal. Usually it's uh, understood to, and it's in pause. So, it's in pause. So, that's why the form is like this. But uh, it looks usually to, to wither. And then it says this, he flees like a shadow and literally does not stand. Amad does not stand, does not last. So again, it shows the fleeting nature of man. Of course, a theme that is very prevalent in the book of Ecclesiastes, where the expression is, Haval habalim hakol havel. Everything is havel. But this is the idea. Gray translates it even more uh, 
uh, a little bit more flowing. It says, fleeing and unstable like a shadow. Basically, is the life of a man like a flower. We find this idea, of course, also in Isaiah. That, uh, you know, the man fades away, but the word of the Lord remains forever. The flower fades, the grass withers, but the word of the Lord remains forever. But here, obviously, uh, Job is emphasizing the fleetingness of his life. So notice, of course, the verb malalium. I want to look at that. It. it appears a few times in Job. So notice, usually, it appears in a concept of something that has to do with the plant. Notice in, uh, it appears in 1816. I put it for you here. His roots drop beneath and his branches wither. So again, the idea of a branch of a plant withering. And in 24, 24, they are exalted a little while and then are gone. They are brought low and gather up like all others. They are cut off like the heads of a grain. Or perhaps better, they wither like the heads of a grain. Again, again, human beings are like the plants, the heads of the grains, which are cut off or which wither. That is the idea. Now, uh, the, the Job continues and says, Al afalze pakachta einecha v'oti tavi b'mishpat imach. So basically, it's understood as a question mark by, by most. It says, uh, and do you open, do you open pakach, do you open your eyes? to one, afalze, literally, also upon this, upon this one, also upon this one, or op also on such one you're opening your eyes. V'oti tadiba mishpatimach, and me, you bring, of course, this is the, I hope you recognize the verb root here is bo, so again, I don't want to uh, waste too much time here, but uh, the verb root is bo, Again, uh, having a little bit of a t hard time uh, getting this to work. Okay, so but hopefully you recognize here the verb bo, right? Bo, and it's a he feel of course. Bo means to come, but in the he feel to bring. And me, me emphasis here. It's fronted. Me, you bring in judgment with you. Imach. It should be imacha, but don't forget that in pause at the end of the verse, it, it becomes imach. So it should be imacha, but at the end of a verse, it becomes imach. And notice here, uh, Gray inserts 1328 here, very questionable. But uh, he does go with the LXX. The LXX actually, instead of having oti, it has oto. Oto. And of course, this is term masculine singular. So it could be, uh, do you open, and do you open your eyes on such a one, and bring him. So instead of me, uh, you have a bring him into judgment. So this is a judgment call, but it's, it's clearly, uh, it's possible that the Septuagint is correct here. Why do you open uh, your eyes on such, a, such one as this, and bring him into judgment with you? makes more sense to bring him, so it's possible that the Septuagint is correct here. Mi iten tahor mitamei lo echat. So again, mi iten is usually a volitional, and it's many times translated, um, it's many times translated as uh, all that. It's like a wish, but in this case, it seems to be the, the literal translation, who produces, who produces. Or uh, who can produce, who can, who can give, who can produce, who can bring a clean thing from, a, from, of course here we have a, from a, a, an unclean thing. And the answer is again very briefly, lo echad, not one, or none can. So again, uh, Gray I think is probably correct here, the, mean, the meaning of me ten here me ten here is the literal who can produce so not a wish or that or that someone would bring something clean from the unclean i don't think that's the meaning but rather who can produce who can give something clean from the unclean who can uh, bring out right 
and the answer is lo echad, not even one. Nobody can do that. Now it's unclear exactly what the statement means here, but this is something that we can discuss when we discuss the interpretation and the theological interpretation. So try to see if you can find in the commentaries or in your personal thinking what is the meaning of this expression and why is it here. So that is something else. And now we move on to verse 5. Im charutzim yamav mispar chadashav itach huko asita velo yavor shei mealav vayechdal ad irtze kasakir kasakir yomo so im charutzim so it's interesting that most translation, actually every translation translated in here like since. Uh, it's very interesting, it's not a usual way to translate it as since. Usually im is like if or just introduces a question mark or maybe certainty, certainly. But most go here with since. So I was looking at a few translations since, since even a great New King James versions. And so on, of course, because of the message, grace, since. But anyway, since his days, we, we see here the third masculine singular on plural. This, of course, the noun is yom. Since his days are harutim, harutim here understood as determined or defined. Mispar chadashav, mispar here is the number, number of his months are with him. And the number of his minds is with with you. The number of his minds are with you. Sorry, again, it's itacha, but because itachim pause. Don't forget this atnach. It's a pause. It's at the middle of the verse. Since his days are, are, are determined, and the number of his months are with you. So basically, you you define, you decide the number of his months. Chukoasita veloyavor. So basically, you did, of course, this is the verb asa, you did, you appointed, huko, huk, like a statue, border, limits. Probably here is better the idea of limits. You have appointed his limits, or maybe the duration of his time, right? Velo yavor, and he will not pass. What is here, of course, is just a cal imperfect from the verb avar, to pass. And again, it appears with the, the long O. It appears with this, uh, what's called plain A spelling. It's very, very common in, in many places in Job, especially at the end of the verse or before an Atnach. So here, yeah, since his days are determined, the number of his months is with you, and you have appointed his limit that he cannot pass, or he will not pass. Now is this uh, sentence, Sha'ei me'alav, so basically, look away from him. We will look at the verb sha'a. Look away from him and cease, or leave him alone in a more free translation, but literally, and cease. Ad yirtze kasachir yomo. Until, until, use, I don't know what's translated here, that. It's usually until or so that. Maybe though. So that he will enjoy, like a hireling, like somebody who's hired, like a higher hand, his day. So this is how most translations go, but like you say, I cross this out so that he may enjoy. Because it seems to me that this is a different uh, understanding of the verb ratza. Ratza, sure, it means to enjoy, to like, something like that. Even today in uh, modern Hebrew, I like, I enjoy maybe. But here it's probably better to translate so that he can finish his day. So that he can finish his day like a hireling. And this is the translation that uh, we find in the New King James Version. Till he like, till like a hire man, he finishes his day. So look away from him so he can rest. Or so he can cease. Or so that he can... Uh, and... and, and and leave him alone, or and leave him alone, or so here it's again disputed how you translate, uh, and he will cease, or 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 leave him alone, 
but here I think it's a better translation until or so that he will finish his day like a higher hand and, uh, and there's some uh, support or you know Gray says until he discharges as a hireling his term and uh, again Harutim just to give you some background here Harutim literally means to cut sharp but here probably means defined or decreed about his date now Sha'a I mentioned that we're going to look at this verb Sha'al means to gaze to look at but with Min as we have it here to look away from me, to avert one's gaze. And we have this text in Job 7.19, but also with Me'al here, we have it in Job 14.6. So basically, look away from me. Because the look of God, again, we see it here, instead of being a look of favor, he understands it as a look of disfavor, because you're looking upon me like your enemy. And Ratza, again, and the classical Hebrew, as I mentioned, means to be pleased, to like, to enjoy, like most of the translations, but can mean here to discharge an obligation, as it seems to be occurring in Leviticus. He thinks that this is a later occurrence maybe coming from Aramaic, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. Here, however, I would translate it better like this, uh, you know, so look away from me and cease... Or, or that so that I may see, so that I may rest, the way it is written like this. Again, uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, here it's important to take a look also at the textual criticism here, and maybe we'll do that in class. Until, like a hiring hand, like a hired man, his days, his day is finished. He's finished, not he enjoys his day. So uh, again, uh, you know, the request is for God to look away from him so at least he can have some peace and rest because he understands the gaze of God and this concern of God for him is a concern not for grace and not for something good but rather for punishment and for suffering. And uh, we can continue now with verses 7 and 9. Ki yesh la'ait tikva im ikarit ועוד יחליף ויונקתו לא תחדל. So we see here again the verb חדל, usually understood to cease. אם יסכין בארץ שורשו, so notice here, this is שורשו, this is a closed, an accent is syllable, so the accent is here. So we read נשרשו בשורשו ובאפר ימות גזו so, for there is to the tree hope. This is a key word here, hope. Hope, it appears quite a few times in Job, but the question is, is there hope or there is no hope? Right? This is a question, of course, for chapter 14. But really, for the whole book, does Job has any hope? So notice how he says here, now, for there is, for a tree, hope. If he is cut down, karat, to cut down, this is an ifal. If he is cut down, cut down, he is still, he still revives, he still can shoot back, basically. We will look at this verb. You want to look at this verb, it's a he feel. And it's, it's, uh, I should put this also uh, as, a, as a red because it's to be taken together. Usually, yonek, yonek refers to a, 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 like some uh, something small, like a child. Here's the only time it appears like a feminine, like this, yonek, uh, and probably it refers to like a, like a, like with the translation, uh, the shoots, and its shoots will not cease, will not cease. Basically, the idea is uh, that uh, for a tree, there is hope. Because even if you cut down, you know, there might be some shoots that sprout from the roots and may sprout again, basically may come back again to life. And if, if, uh, we can translate that again, if, if in the land, in earth, its roots grow old, sakan, again, notice, he feel, if, grows old in the land, its root 
and in the dust dies again gizo gizo again it's understood like the stump the stump that is left there and if in the in the in the soil or in the in the dust its stump dies meireach maim yafriach literally from the scent of the water he will sprout out he may sprout out he may bud vasakatir kamonata and uh, will make technically speaking will make branches or shoot it's singular here but acts as a plural it's like a collective and literally it makes shoots or it puts out branches like a young plant neta again uh, as we shall see here in the in the in the vocabulary that you want to look at halaf is to sprout afresh it's a metaphoric but usually is to change to replace but with the tree here probably metaphorically is to sprout or to sprout afresh uh, to sprout afresh right uh, you see here it sprouts afresh and uh, also your naked your naked feminine it usually appears only in the plural is the feminine of yonek and here it's shoot probably a shoot like uh, just a small branches that are coming out and also uh, i said we look at geza which is usually a stump or a rootstock it appears metaphorically in isaiah 11 11 11 1 which is a messianic test is it very interesting but it's the shoot from the stump here here referring to the stump of a root and uh, katir again is a collective we saw upstairs meaning branches even though it's a singular we translate branches and neta of course we have the verb nata to plant but here in this context this seems to be in seedling or you know just like a, like a very small uh, small uh, seedling that you put in the in the ground so later it grows into a tree i think that is the idea so again yet at the center of the water you will bud or you will sprout and put out branches again katsir katsir here branches like you know a young plant a young plant is i think a good translation like a sapling like a seedling so this is the situation with the tree but the question is what is the situation with the man so here we'll see that job will draw a contrast between a tree which has a chance which has tikva and then a man will men have tikva so this is why we're going to look in the next lecture we'll pick it up in the next lecture